This is Ryan Doyle, Q&A session at the Airborne Academy. Thank you for your questions. Jay's going to be asking the questions and I'm going to try my best to give the short answer. Right, first question is from Nathan Chapman. Mm. Do you have any new moves in mind that have never been done before? Yeah, but they're not like big crazy moves, you know, like everyone wants to see the next big move. Uh, okay. Just think about the next move. So. Um, Imagine standing on a wall with your back to the drop. Do a loser side flip to cat. Mm, yeah? Okay. You think that's new? I haven't seen that before. I've never seen anyone do a loser to cat grab before, to be honest. Like a, like a side flip, so you're doing like a tunnel flip and then you're landing on cat position on the wall you took off. Okay, next question is from Eden Hoy, and we've already been warned about uh, this question. Do you believe in aliens and why? Do I believe in aliens and why? Um, I'm going to go with, yeah, but we might have, that, have the same uh, opinion of what aliens are. You've also you've got interdimensional beings, which could be from different alternative versions of this planet. So, say like in the past, a load of people got together and released all the cool technology. And so there's a utopia version of Earth, and they might be interacting with this version of Earth. So therefore, they're from the same place. They just might look different, they might be smarter, they might be better. And then you've got aliens who are from actual born on other planets. And if they've got the technology together, yeah, which I believe the technology exists, so it's possible for them too. So therefore, yeah, why not? Okay, uh, next one from Leo Samson, little Leo in street team. What mentality do you have to have to do what you do? To do what I do when, because I'm doing a lot of different things. <laughs> you do any tunings when you're doing all your free running stuff, all your mad flips, tricks? Um, you have to have a goal in mind before you even start. So usually when I'm making a video, or when see when I'm doing free running, just training, I'm just going out training, then it's about being healthy. It's about training. It's from a body. If it's about making a video, then it's having the idea of what message am I trying to get across first, and then base the video around that. If it's about a new trick, then I film the trick first and then back do the back end for you know, like a uh, reverse engineer the yeah, run yeah, yeah. that leads to that trick. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I did Crazy Park Day. I did the con gamer first and then built the entire rest of the video around that, around that one move. Yeah. Comes on to our next question. Uh, this is from me. Uh, when is Crazy Park 2 coming? Ha ha ha, good question. I've already spoken to the cameraman Kev Stokes of the original Crazy Park Day about doing a sequel back at the original Crazy Park. And basically, we could release three videos. So you've got, I'm going to redo the whole run. No, sir. So it's going to be 13 years later doing the same. Does just to show that, you know, like. Is that park still even there? It's. It's, some of it's been changed. It's, it's overgrown, the decrepit. It's got weeds and everything. But that's going to be another BTS video to go along with it to show what it is now, to show what we're doing. And then a third video showing both videos playing side by side. So the old one and the new one. But I can't do all the same moves because some of the equipment's gone. So Crazy Park Day 2 looks like it's going to be a reality. But don't, it's not going to be like in the new playground with a new thing. It's not that type. That's too simple. Just find a new playground and do it again. What I'm going to do is revisit the old one. Um, it's kind of like testing yourself. Have I still got it? You know what I mean? Of course I have, but... Oh, definitely. Just to I show... a lot of us have been waiting for this sequel. <laughs> so I've had a guy tell me that um, uh, Chris, Chris from America, he wants to come over and help film it because the video had such an impact on him. Did, when he was a kid. Lo loads of people, from uh, especially around the Liverpool area and all that, that was like one of their go-to videos. So that was, was the definitely vi one of the first ever videos I seen it for Liverpool for me to get inspired by and be like... That, that was the video, Crazy Park Day was the video that got me the invitation to Rebel Art Emotion. So that video sparked my entire career and my life in that oh. direction. Yeah, and we, it ha we, we were teaching, we had an airborne class in the, in the, in the Georges complex next to the park. We finished the class and we were just teaching people how to flip. We mixed together breakdowns and downs. It's not, not much different from what it is now, except it, it didn't have the community. We were just growing the community and seeing who was interested in it. And then we went outside to the playground and started testing, dragging the crash mess out and testing it. And I thought, right, let's do this. Let's do it outdoors now. Let's take these trick and moves to levels. That's it. This one's from Shay, little Shay, uh, Shay Butterman. 
he's in our street team as well. He says, what motivates you? Hmm. About, that could be in there, anything, what motivates you in life, what motivates you in your training. It's a very vague question, isn't it? What motivates you, yeah. Um, I, I'm just going to assume that he's talking about to free run. Uh, I get motivated by people like him. So the younger generation who I'm seeing and I'm watching the way they think and they're coming up with new ideas. I'm like, wow, we never thought of that before. Because they're taking the movements that we've done that were big to us as now standard. Yeah. So within their brain with them moves being standard they're then thinking well, what's big bigger to do so it's my job as a teacher to create more teachers you know what i mean i'm not going to hold them back do as i say copy what i do it's, it's i've got to teach them the basics set them free and when they go off and be creative eventually they'll be teaching me yeah yeah after shooting to need already like doing stuff that we couldn't do i know no, yeah what so i get inspired by the younger generation i get inspired by old videos that you know the ones that you really latch on to for you yeah. so there's, there's like past positive then you got future positive as well you know what i mean yeah definitely definitely triggers i have little triggers of inspiration oh yeah i think everyone does here there's always that like even the old videos that i've went back at low times and watched those videos and just like that's so sick <clears throat> but you know a lot of the time it could be down to just sitting there for a few days and realizing i haven't done any training and i feel bad i feel physically sick knowing that i haven't I'm neglecting my own body, so I, I, I inspire myself just from the sheer fact that it's healthy. You know what I mean? What, what, we, what we do is healthy, and the health benefits of activating your adrenaline gland is proven. It can de-age you, it can make you so much youthful. Like when you get off a roller coaster, you're like, whoa, yeah, let's go again, because your adrenaline's active. We were born with two instinctive fears that activate your adrenaline, the fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. And we can set off fireworks and feel like, woo, yeah. Or we can also go training and climb stuff and be like, I could fall. And that is activating my adrenaline. I'm training. And this is all part of the big package of healthy living. Uh, next one, Tanya. She's another member of our team escape. She says, I know, what's Tanya. your worst injury? Ooh, that one takes me back to 2007. <laughs> Red Bull Art Emotion. <laughs> I, going to be that one? I did a double cork off of like a, uh, big man, I don't know how big it was. You can watch it online. It's 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 quite horrific. Um, landed one two, and if I if I'd have took off properly, I'd have landed two feet together. But by the way, I took off, and I understand now what I did wrong. I landed left right, and the first foot missed the crash mat, hit the concrete, and just snapped shin bone out the side. Yeah. Um, other injuries have been like smashed teeth, broken wrists, fingers, toes separated collarbone, I've had that wired back together. They just keep fixing me, bro. NHS is great. Rinse them. They just keep fixing us. <laughs> <laughs> so have you got like uh, metal rods and things? I had uh, a titanium bar, 14 screws in there because I had a plate on the side as well. I had the plate removed and the screws taken out, but I told them to keep the bar in because my question was, how are you going to remove it? You know, the same way as we got it in. Take the kneecap to the side, pull it out. I'm like, no, what, what are the benefits of leaving it in? Nothing, it'll never break again. I'm like, upgrade? Yeah, Sounds like an upgrade. And I got laser eye surgery, upgrade. And I got new teeth, upgrade. And I got <laughs> artificial ligaments in my shoulder, stronger than human ligaments, upgrade. Coming like a cyborg. And they gave me like cool hair. Upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Next one is from Harry. I mean, this is Harry King. Um, he says, what's the best trick you have done? Ooh, the best trick that I feel would be like aesthetically pleasing to me um, was the Voltaire move that I came up with for the DXM movie. The movie got retitled to Mind Gamers. Um, you can... <laughs> actually didn't even make the cut. <laughs> it just got me the job. <laughs> so it starts off like, um, imagine you're on one level to the next level. We'll cut to this. So I've got a video clip of it. So speed vault into a castaway, into step on the wall, fall down. Ooh, yeah. You've seen it, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. So would you not clash your, you're the one who invented the wall gainer. Would you not clash that as your best trick? It is a cool trick, but People can do it now, it's easy, you know. You got you got the wall front, the wall side, wall gainer, it's just the next step in the twist and variation. 
And what if you think of um, a round off up a wall without your hands, run, hit it, and do like a round off? That's your wall gainer. You know what I mean? I mean, it used to be my best trick because nobody else was doing it. A wall gainer was the one, and it was like, right, let's see the wall gainer, and I'd go do it. But I mean, it is now people. That you've invented it as well. Back in the day, there was a lot of undiscovered movements, and even today, I still think there's still more to be discovered. Okay. Discovered. It's just seeing what that younger generation can do now. Yeah, it's hard but to try and keep up with them, isn't it? It's almost impossible. You got uh, what's the, no fear and nothing to lose. Yeah. So yeah. I've got I've got things to lose now, so I've got fears. I'm going to be a dad soon. Right, uh, this one is from Alfie Alfie Harrington. He says, how did you get into stunt work? It's a secret. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're now a, a registered stuntman. Right? I am, yeah. Um, there's, there's, it's mainly, you just got to build up a portfolio. You know, if, if, how it works is like this. Create show reels. So get your skills sorted. Film them. Put, put it out there. That's your show reel. That show reel is going to get you work. Once you get real work, paid work, contract jobs, you then take that videos from that job and make a pro reel. Does that make sense? So you've got a video of skills just to, ex just to exhibition your skills to get work. Once you get the work, you, you get all the videos of the jobs, put them together into a pro reel. Once you've got your pro reel sorted, you then should have enough, enough collateral to be able to apply to certain stunt industries around the world. Did you, like, once you got into your like free run, was that your main goal? Stunt being a before free running was a thing. You wanted to be. I a wanted to be a stunt man. I didn't know how to get into it, but then that dream was put aside because I was ach achieving everything I ever wanted to achieve through free running. I was living the dream through free running. I was traveling the world, doing my own stunts, filming it, choreographing it, and it was just I was on my own little Jackie Chan adventure around the world, you know, following in his footsteps. So I didn't feel as if I needed to, and then I, I realized that, you know, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> I'm going to have to apply to get on the stunt register at some stage. So, and then I realized I had so much collateral to do so. Yeah. Put it all together and I applied and I got accepted. Nice. So it, can you tell us any, and you've been working on recently or have completed? Yeah. Can you tell us anything? Um, I was on, um, so last year was a pretty good run for me. I did a couple of, it was about a month on Black Widow. And then straight after that was um, Twist. So there's a new, new Oliver Twist movie. Um, and I was the lead double throughout the whole thing. So it, that one was a good one because it's Rafferty Law. You can, you can. You know, I'm not, I'm not giving any of the storyline away or anything. But I can tell you who's in it because it's, it's online. You can check. It's got Michael Caine in, Jude Law, um, David Williams, Keith Lemon. You know, it's, it's got a good cast. Re Rita Ora, and uh, so I, my contract was that I'm, I'm Rafferty Law's stunt double throughout. The, and it, the best part about it was that it was all free running related. So I get yeah. to, got to do all the Jackie Chan stuff. It was great. Yeah, that was probably one of the best jobs I've ever done in my life. And did you put your ideas into it, or was the, did they already have a set, uh, like, this, I want you to do this, this, or was you like, I want to do this? No, so the coordinators will choose the location, and, and I mean, I did want to go on the location scouts too, but it was all so rushed and tight, and, and so when I got to the location, it was just like Ryan working magic, you know, come up, here's what he wants, come up with some ideas. So we'd film everything that we'd want, we, pre we, sh sh we like with the coordinator, and then the coordinator presents it to the director. The director says yes or no, or change this and that, and we, we make it work. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, if you think about how we do it when we go out and film, it's exactly the same. It's just that at the end of the day, there's a director with a vision and it's got to meet his vision, so he has the final say on everything. Whereas if our vision is just to get a cool move out there, then there's so many ways of doing it, you know what I mean? Right, well, we'll keep a lookout for the, those two films. Yeah, they, put, put but the, you do you know what's cool? Um, this is a cool story, this. So about 2011, you know, about eight or nine years ago, the script for the Twist movie came out 
and we hear everyone who's a free runner like heard that they're making a new Oliver Twist and they want free runners involved in it. So it was that long ago? No, that's when the script came out and I applied for it back then. I applied to be one of the leads in it and then it got held, it got held back, things got put on hold and all that and then it, it came back again and then they got me in to be the lead stunt double. It's like, what's well, amazing how things circle back around to you. That's mad, I didn't know it was like that far back then, it like started. Yeah, because like, when I got called, for the job, I was like, seems so familiar. This did I have a dream about this? What's going on? This seems, and then I asked the coordinators, like, did, did this come out like years ago? Because I'm sure I've applied for this already, <laughs> <laughs> and it did, yeah. You're Anthony now. This is from Anthony. Why don't you know how to use a PlayStation? <laughs> I do know how he's asking me this because. I've got a PS4 sitting in the living room. It's been there since I did the job for um, Destiny. They gave me the PlayStation so that I could learn, play the game to understand what the commercial for the game that was. <laughs> it's great, it's a great deal. But I don't play the PlayStation. It's there and I can, I do know how to use it. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Say Breaker, who's on Instagram. He says, have you ever had a surprise party that was actually a surprise? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Yeah, I have. Um, I'm trying to think of it as a surprise, I didn't know about it. My 21st birthday was a big party. Did you know about like, did you walk in one of those cliche where you open the doors? Ah, surprise! N no, I kind no. of, I had to invite people. <laughs> 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 so I kind of organised it for myself. But I got that car, my Peugeot 206 from my 21st birthday off my dad. That was a surprise. <laughs> Who is the best person you've trained with or train with now, currently? Free running. Um, who do I train with? The lids, innit? <laughs> so the, the lids, Scott Gentle and Cotty, Liam. Yeah, Does so, get you pumped when you're training? Yeah, I mean, I have, yeah, so with Scott, has got amazing ability. Dacos, he's, he's just a very positive guy. Liam uh, has got energy and very good tricking and all that. And then we've got David, uh, no, um, Richie Squires, who's over in China right now. So there's like five of us. And when we get together, we know we can make like really cool stuff happen. We've already planned a fight scene over on Everton Hill. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to be a, f a three onto one fight scene, so you know what I mean. Okay. Uh, Talking about fight scenes, I, I every time the, it's came out, I always think that the, you and your acne, you always do sick little fight scenes. Shinobi Code, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, sacrifice. That, that was you know, the dream back in the day. We were all we were dedicated martial artists. That's how we started before we, and then you watching like. Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, and all that, and they're all doing flips and twists as well. So then we started learning how to do flips and twists, and then we started learning how to take it to levels. So all my training all stems from martial arts and wanting to be a ninja that can just do all that stuff, you know what I mean? So when you put a fight scene together, it's kind of like a dance. You choreograph and a dance with someone, and it, it, it's, it's really... Yeah, I was saying to you, Anthony, that you, I think you should make like a, a mini series, just you and Anthony, and just doing loads of. I think we will. I stuff. think the lids. I think. That'll be boss. Anthony involved also. We're gonna do like a con. I mean, it's a win-win. Just putting a constant output of short, snappy fight yeah. scenes out yeah. there that I'll have the free running elements in there, the action, the excitement, the music, the sound effects, and also showing how we put it together. What's like your, your go-to foods like for your breakfast? You wake up, what's, what's your breakfast? Oh, I have porridge with either banana or blueberries in. Ooh, yes. Yeah, I just don't know what I mean. I never, was never into porridge my entire life. I love cereal. I used to eat cereal. I mean, you could cut out every meal of the day and replace it with cereal. That's the way I was. Yeah, you'd have a nighttime cereal, wouldn't you? Great, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like venturing out on my cereals. <laughs> going into porridge and fruit. <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually gotten way more healthier the older I've gotten. Just I, through I doing... I think that's it for, for a lot of us. Well, we've done I think it's because of the internet and, and the research is now available and you can, don't have to like listen to someone. You can just check the facts yourself and see that these will, are antioxidants. These will do this, this will do that. 
So you decide, you start to think, well, why would I not put this good food in my body? Uh, other hobbies besides free running. I'm playing the piano. I play the piano. I like instruments. Um, I've been learning the Back to the Future theme tune at the moment. So I can do Jurassic Park. I can, I can do back. I can do uh, Indiana Jones. I can play uh, Green Onions and some jazzy ones. And I just wanted to get that uh, Back to the Future theme tune. Anything else besides piano? Any like bike riding or? I just fixed my mountain bike, so I'm trying to make right bike riding a thing for myself. It never where it really was, you know. It used to be it's a thing when you're a kid. Now I've grown up, I've got a car, but no, my car's there for actually getting me from A to B. Bike rides are just going on bike rides. There's no B. Just go out and you know what I mean. Why? It's healthy. Yeah. <laughs> you come Do you back want and you. Next time for our bike ride with me. Oh, will. We go on fat bike rides. Ah, oh, invite me. I'd love Do to. It. We're going on a bike ride on That's Saturday. That's it. Join in. Let's do it. Uh, what's next for you and Airborne then? Anything. Airborne is a community. It'll be around forever. All it can do is grow. That's, that's all that. With me and Airborne, it's like, you just plant the seed and I'm just letting it grow. That's it, it's just gonna grow. Don't put any doubt in me or don't even talk about the fact that it could be closed or anything. That's just not true. That's not how communities work. No, no, never. And th the more it grows, the more likely it is to sustain. Why? Because there's more heads in the game. Makes sense? So, people worried about are we gonna open up again? Of course we're gonna open up again. Very soon, sooner than you think. Well, what's, what, what's your been like? What's your feelings on Airborne from what it was to what it is now? Because wasn't it called what? Uh, suspended an animation? <laughs> no, we were going over like um, ideas for a cool team name at the time, and we ended up with Airborne Entertainment. And we were an entertainment production team, you know basically to entertain people. When we became Airborne Academy, that's when we realized that we're bigger than, than, a, than a production team. We're, we're a community, you know what I mean? And, and these people need to somewhere where they can train and, and stretch out their skills. And, and so the academy was, you know, it's not as formal and as strict as, as educational academies. It's come and be free, be born of air, you know what I mean? And the amount of great people that we've met here. It, it's changed my life forever. Airborne is my family. Right, last question. What's next for Ryan Doyle? Cool, I like that one. There's a few ideas that I've got on the go. Um, I was gonna release a book. <laughs> yeah, that was one that I'm still putting, to, putting together 10 chapters for. Nice. I'm also pitching a second season of Travel Story but it's not going to be about me going to cool spots around the world. It's going to be me going around the world, obviously, but meeting the groups, meeting teams of free runners and seeing how they train. So it'll be well easier for me, you know, physically. I don't have to fill all the time up. They can fill all the time up now. I just want to interview them. Well, exactly what you're doing to me. And spread the message is by showing people what other people are doing, not showing them what I'm doing. Showing them, well, this is how it is, I'll prove it, why? Because there they are doing it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So with that, in your, in your travel story, you hit up the seven wonders of the world, wasn't it? Seven it's, uh, it's seven episodes. So of... you're going to go back to the same places or you're going to go to new places? No, there's no point in going to the same places. I'll go to, you know, this, the, the world is, there's not just them seven wonders, there's so many wonders in this world that like, it's sad that they don't get a reputation and you can go to these cool spots, meet the athletes who train locally around there and let them guide me, you know what I mean? Take me to the hot spots. I don't need to find it. You already know. Yeah. There's people out there in some of the, like, you know, the proper slums of the world and they're like training parkour and doing like some mad stuff with basically just, just grass. Like, yeah. How, how you, how, and then there's a massive waterfall behind them or something. Yeah. <laughs> It's just great. And then uh, other ideas I've got is, as we brought up before, the um, the series of just doing like action fight sequences using parkour, which is kind of something I've always been into. So I'll keep that going. 